All right, so this morning I had some very unfortunate, very disturbing news, and that is I thought I had reserved a table at Reptilian Nation, the reptile show here in one week, and come to find out that I apparently I didn't reserve a table, and it wasn't reserved for me, and all the tables are booked. As a matter of fact, they told me that there's 10 people waiting in line for tables at that show. So unfortunately, I don't have a table, and I won't be at Reptilian Nation vending with my snakes. And let me tell you, that is like a punch in the gut. You guys, if you've been watching my videos, you know I've been kind of looking, for, I've been looking forward to this for two months, kind of bragging about, yeah, I want to be at the show. I know there's a lot of people that have been watching my videos that say, hey, I'm looking forward to meeting you at Reptilian Nation. Come to find out, I won't actually be there. But on the plus side, one week after Reptilian Nation is the Denver Repticon. And let me tell you a little bit about how the misinformation kind of went through. So at the very last show at Reptilian Nation, uh, you know, we're basically packing up at the end of the show and the, the, the organizers of the show, they come up to me and say, hey, you gonna be at the next show? And I said, yeah, I'll be there. So they took out their clipboard, put a mark, a check box on the clipboard. I thought, hey, they're marking me for a table at the next show, I'll definitely be there. And the, the funny thing is, is uh, they have a vendor list on their website of all the people that are gonna be at the show and I'm always on the vendor list. I do all the Reptilian Nations spring and fall in Denver. I'm, I'm at every single show and they put me, even though I don't pay in advance, they put me on the vendor list. As a matter of fact, at the very last show, what they did is a few weeks before the show, they sent me an invoice and I paid for it over through email. So this show, I was thinking, all right, you know, I'm on the vendor list. You know, they checked my name on the box at the last show. I figured they thought I was going to be there and, and here it is a week before the show and I haven't paid so I sent him an email I said hey I'm ready for you to, to send me an invoice so I can pay for the show and that's when I got the email response saying as a matter of fact all the tables are booked and there's no room at the show which is really unfortunate but a week from the, a week from this this weekend which is Denver Repticon that is June 15th and 16th 2019 I'll definitely be at that show and the funny thing is that show is 2 weeks out and I didn't even pay for the show so I actually looked on their website to see if my name was on there just out of curiosity and sure enough my name Chris Hardwick Reptiles is on the list of vendors at the show and they just assume that I'm going to be at the you know every single show and I don't even pay or sign up or anything anymore and I see my name and you know I, I figured the booth is reserved at these shows because I'm at every show and come to find out that that's not always the case it looks like I'm going to have to actually pay probably a couple months in advance to make sure that I get the tables at the shows which is uh, pretty unfortunate so it's kind of a bummer I won't be at this coming show so this is you know really kind of a kind of a downer for me and I'm trying to think of something where I can pick up my steam again try to get back on track and I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to open up a box of snake eggs that are ready to hatch as a matter of fact I was going through my eggs just last uh, last couple videos ago and there was one snake that was out of the shell and some of the other ones were kind of peeking out and that was the cross between my coral glow and a lemon blast so what I'm gonna do today is probably one of the most exciting parts besides the reptile shows and that is cutting open and looking inside snake eggs and seeing what's in there and normally I don't really cut unless a lot of them are kind of you know they, they put the slit in the egg and they're kind of checking this snake. I don't know what this snake is doing. This crazy snake. And today uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that box out of the incubator and I'm going to peek in those eggs. And if some of those snakes are out, I know at least one snake is out and that was my Coral Glow Lemon Blast. It was a beautiful snake and that was kind of like the crown jewel, the first one that came out, which is pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do, if any snakes are out of the egg, I'm going to set them up in my hatchling rack and figure out the males and the females. And if they're not out of the egg, I'm going to cut the egg open a little bit more and peek inside and see what we get 
for the results. All right, even though the Reptilian Nation show is canceled for me, I'm gonna still have some fun with some eggs. And let's take a look in here. This is my cross lemon, lemon blast with my coral glow. And let's see how many snakes are out of the eggs. And wow, take a look at that. Oh, we got quite a few out of the egg. This one right here is the one we looked at before. This is the first one that was out, and I'm pretty sure this is the Lemon Blast Coral Glow. And we'll have to figure out if this is a male or female. I'm guessing that most of my Coral Glows are actually gonna be males because my the male that I bred to my Lemon Blast, it is a Coral Glow male maker. And last year I had a bunch of Coral Glows and every single one was a male. And it's interesting, the, the male and the female is linked with the Coral Glow gene. So some are female makers, some are male makers. And my male just happens to be a male maker. So I'm guessing most of these will be male makers. And take a look at this. This is, these are some empty eggshells here. This one looks like, this one looks like a normal. And as a matter of fact, my, my Coral Glow male is 100% het pied. So this could be, uh, this is 50% het pied. And it's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes they'll have like tracks along the belly if they're head pie. This one almost looks like there's kind of tracks a little bit down the belly. So this one could be uh, head pied. Let me move some of these eggshells out of here. This one, let's take a look at this. This, <laughs> these are all twisted together. All right, let's see this one right here. Wow, this looks like just a regular coral glow. Take a look at that. As a matter of fact, you know, this could be this could be a pastel coral glow. Could have pastel in it. It looks it's kind of hard to tell the pastels and the coral glow. As a matter of fact, last year I had some that were possible pastels. I wasn't 100% sure. I kind of sold them as possible pastel and the kind of the trick on these could be the lighter head. I know my bamboos, when it has pastel in it, it has a lighter head. And this one right here, I am guessing this is probably a pinstripe coral glow. And as a matter of fact, I saw one of these on the internet, the, the pinstripe coral glow. And it, when they get bigger, I think they get a lot more beautiful. That really gets enhanced when they get a little bit bigger. The colors really pop when they get bigger. And this is this is really what I was shooting for, the pinstripe coral glow. Because I saw that on, on Morph Market. I was like, I need to make one of those. And when it gets bigger, you know, the, the orange really starts popping out. And it looks like it's a little bit duller now than I expected. But let me tell you, when these mature, it will be pretty incredible. And we have, let's see, one, we have, let's see, there's another one here, and another one here, and here, and here. So it looks like we have five more eggs, two that have little cuts in them, and it looks like three that aren't quite cut yet. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna peek inside of these eggs and see what else we have as far as the, the other hatchlings that we can expect that should hatch out from this clutch. All right, so normally when you're cutting eggs, it's a really good idea to wait before most of them are either out or have slit the egg before you actually start cutting. If you cut them and none of them are slit, you're taking a big chance. As a matter of fact, on my very first clutch, I took a big chance because I cut some eggs and the incubator temperature was off and I was thinking that um, it was good to cut and as a matter of fact, it was a little bit too early because my incubator has having some problems and I use these big scissors I think it's a little bit easier to, to cut without worrying about actually cutting the offspring because you have a little bit bigger let's see this guy this guy's head is right here he is peeking out and really you don't want them to come out you just want to cut just enough so you can see what it is This one. All 
I would say this one this one looks like a coral glow this one I don't want to cut too much but you can see his head just kind of just kind of peeking out take a look at that that is so cute that looks like a coral glow I don't want to take them out too much I just want to peek inside so let's take a look at the next egg here take a look at this one I'm going to put the cover back on so we don't lose any snakes over here take a look at this one Hard to tell on this one. It looks like this one looks like another. It looks like another pinstripe coral glow. You can see kind of the orange in there, and you can see some of the the striping from the pinstripe. Doesn't really look like it has the pastel because the pastel breaks it up. This looks like another pinstripe coral glow. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right, so then we have three that are not cut at all. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little tiny snip here. This always kind of makes me nervous. Definitely don't want to cut the baby. Yeah, and they got a lot of goop running out of this one. So this one actually looks like I just want to cut just a little bit. I don't know if you can see in there. But that looks like another coral glow. Nice. You can see that? Just a little peak right there. That's some pretty good odds so far. <laughs> you know, we can get we can get pinstripes and we can get normals and we can get pastels. There's a bunch of stuff we can get. And these eggs are pretty stuck together. It's kind of interesting. Boy. So we have two more here. Let's take a look at this. See what's in this egg. All right. Let's see what we have here. Wow. That looks that looks really crazy. Wow. Take a look at that. <laughs> That is pretty wild here. Let me move my let me move my light up just a little bit more. You get a little bit more light. This one almost looks like I have no idea what this is. It almost looks like it has some leopard in it or something. Take a look at that. That is really wild looking. I have no idea what that is. So now keep in mind, I actually thought at one point that my Coral Glow had some other kind of a weird gene in it because it, uh, I had a kind of a dinker project that I actually sold it in and we thought it was maybe Het Pied or maybe something else in there. I wasn't 100% sure, but I thought maybe there was something weird in that Coral Glow, some other gene. So we'll see if if it actually comes and proves out into, and we get something really weird, that one looks really weird. I have no idea what that one was. We'll have to wait till it comes out. Probably what I'll do is I'll wait a few days until these come out, and then we'll look at them in more detail, all these ones in the egg. I just want to peek in and see what we have here. Boy, this one looks weird too. Mm. That other one kind of had a really interesting line down the back. This one looks kind of weird too. I have no idea what that is either. 
Take a look at that. That is really interesting. I'd say this one might be... I don't know. It's almost like zebra stripes. <laughs> I can't quite tell what that is. We're gonna have to wait till those come out. Those are really interesting. Alright, so I'm gonna start with this pretty much my crown jewel, the Lemon Blast Coral Glow. And this is what I use. I use a probe kit and I use the smallest probe to figure out the males from the females. I use a little of this uh, personal lubricating jelly. It's like a water-based lubricant. And what I do is I just slip the probe right in the base of the tail. And if it goes in really far, then it's a male. If it doesn't go in that far, it's a female. And I'm guessing this guy is going to be a male because it's got coral glow in it. And the problem with these hatchlings is that I think this probe is a little bit too big for brand new hatchlings and sometimes it can kind of trick you. This one, this one seems like a female, and, and let me tell you, if it's a female, it would be pretty incredible because most of them, I'd say 99% are going to be males. This one seems like a female. I'm going to have to double check later when it grows up a little bit more. So this is my tub that I use to set them up in my rack, and this is my second clutch. My hatchling rack is starting to fill up pretty well, so what I actually do is I use coconut husk substrate, and let me get some of this down on the bottom. And what I do is I just put it in pretty good here. Something like that. And then the hot spot is back in the back. It's about 90 degrees. I always like to leave a little spot there so they can get on the hot spot. And that is pretty much it for the substrate and the setup for the hatchling rack. And then I just add a little water here. And we're good to go. Right, so here's the label for that snake. It's a female pastel pinstripe coral glow, 50% het pied, and the numbers at the end are 19 for 2019, C02 for my second clutch, and F, I'm pretty sure it's a female, but I'll have to double check when it gets a little bit older. All right, so I'm gonna probe another snake. This is my coral glow pinstripe. Really good looking snake right there. And let's see if we can figure out if this is a male or a female. And I'm thinking the probe probably is not really working very good. I'm, you know, I'm almost 100% sure that all my core glows are going to be males. And the fact that the last one wasn't going in all the way, I'm thinking the probe is just a little bit too big for the snake. So it can, it can kind of trick you, especially right when they're first hatched out of the egg. And this one's really kind of jumping around. Seems really kind of slimy or dry or something. Slippery, I guess. You know, this one... Uh, it's going just a little bit. I don't know. This... yeah. I'm thinking the probe really doesn't work very well at the beginning when, when the hatchlings are this small. But I'm going to go with a uh, male on this one. It goes in a little bit more than the females. But I'm, for now, I'm just going to mark it as a male. All right, so this one is my core glow. It looks like just a straight core glow. And all of these are 50% head pied. So let's take a look at this one. I'll probe this one just for kicks. And usually I usually I get these guys a little bit wet. I'm going to have to go back and splash a little water on these guys. They seem really super dry. That's why I think that's why they're really slippery is because they're really dry. And all these, I think the probe is kind of tricking us because I think the probe is just a little too big and it won't go far into the tail. So I'm going to guess that this one is probably a male as well. Alright, so this one is just a normal 50% head pie. Doesn't look like it has any other genes in there at all. And I feel like I'm just kind of guessing on figuring out the males and the females since it's not really going that well. It seems like the probe's not really going in. As a matter of fact, last year I probed almost all of them this size and I got a lot of them wrong. And I think it's just because uh, the probe is really 
uh, I was just looking at the looking at the tracks on the belly. It doesn't really seem to me. I can't quite tell. It almost looks like it has some tracks a little bit, but maybe not really strong hit pie markings. Usually, if you have these tracks along the belly, that is a good indicator that is head pied. I guess that you know it could be could be head pied on there. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. You know, I've actually seen tracks that are a lot stronger than that on a head pied, and it usually indicates that they are indeed head pied, but it's it's really hard to tell. Let's see on this one. Yeah, I feel like it's not really going in that deep. I want to say this is it's kind of going in halfway and stopping, which I think is maybe a male. I'm going to label this one as a male as well. Alright, so I actually used this Glad press and seal for the top, and you really don't need any holes at all in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some fresh press and seal on the top and put these back in the incubator. Let them cook a little bit longer until the eggs come out. They look like there's no problems at all. You really can't tell if there's any genetic deformities or anything going on until they actually come out of the egg. Whoa! <laughs> I am out of press and seal. Let's see if this last bit can actually cover it here. Um, hmm, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to have to see if I have another box of press and seal. Alright, so I actually do have another box of press and seal here, which I'm glad I actually bought a second box, which is pretty nice. See if I can get this started here. And some people have been asking me if I put any holes at all in my egg box or in the press and seal. I don't use any holes at all. And it was really surprising for me that the, the snakes can breathe perfectly fine, completely enclosed like this, but apparently it's okay. A lot of people do it and I've never had a problem at all. All right, so take a look at my hatchling rack over here. It is filling up pretty fast. This is from my first clutch here, and this is half of my second clutch. Filling up really good, and this is essentially what it looks like. All set up. This is my new coral glow. Looks like he's trying to bury his head in the substrate. Good looking snake. Take a look at that beauty. Finally got some more coral glows. I know last year some people missed out on the coral glows. So now I definitely have some more babies. Alright, so there you have it. There's nothing like looking at new baby snakes to pull you out of a slump. And I'm really looking forward to looking especially at those two eggs that we cut open. And it almost looked like they had a white background with a really reduced black pattern on top. And really, based on the pairing, there's nothing that could produce that, that kind of a pattern mutation with the cross between the Coral Glow and the Lemon Blast. So it'll be interesting to see what they look like after they come out of the egg. So unfortunately, I won't see you at Reptilian Nation, but I will see you at Denver Repticon in two weeks. That is June 15th and 16th, 2019. I'll be there. I paid for my table this time. I have my displays and everything all ready to go, and I'll definitely be at that show. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.